Star Wars The Last Jedi was a dumpster fire. A roaring dumpster fire of really shitty storytelling on the part of Ryan Johnson and blatant political correctness. J.J. So Abrams snatch the Star Wars franchise from the jaws of failure? Or will the rise of Skywalker suck? Let's discuss. So very recently we got a trailer for the rise of Skywalker and I have to say the trailer looks pretty good. I am cautiously optimistic about this. But I'm not going to hold my breath. Um... It still remains to be seen if J.J. Abrams is going to right the ship or not. If he's going to steer Star Wars away from political correctness, the same kind of really bad, you know, subvert people's expectations storytelling that Ryan Johnson did in The Last Jedi basically stomping on the mystery boxes that J.J. Abrams built up with The Force Awakens and just throwing the fan base of Star Wars under the bus and embracing a crowd that doesn't believe in buying anything because they think everything should be free because they're socialists. Anywho, uh, the trailer looks good. Uh, I have to admit, it does look good. It has the, you know, the big budget polish that we expected from this sequel trilogy. The, uh, the Force Awakens was pretty good. I, I actually did like it, even though it, even though it is basically a rehash of A New Hope. It was good. It served as an introduction to the new, to this new trilogy. But The Last Jedi was a complete dumpster fire. Uh, the, the, the feminism part of it was a minor component. The bulk of what was wrong with uh, The Last Jedi, Ryan Johnson's tone-deaf writing. And if you have to deliberately take characters like Finn and Poe and change their personalities in order to make men look like scumbags to elevate women, you're doing feminism wrong. You are not helping feminism, you're hurting. That's what these people don't understand. Now, are they going to uh, fix that in uh, The Rise of Skywalker? Still remains to be seen. At the end of the trailer, we got to see a dark side ray. And this has sparked some theories. Now, we had theories going into you know, The Last Jedi because of all the events that took place in The Force Awakens. One of the theories is, one of the prevailing theories that's going around in Star Wars fan circles is that Rey is a clone. This is because of the scene in The Last Jedi where she went into the uh, region of er that area on the island in the that was strong in the dark side and she saw all of her copies of herself and when she tried to look for her parents she saw herself that scene makes sense if she's a clone but of whom well the prevailing theory is that she's a clone of anakin the reason why this is is because originally palpatine created Anakin, or is responsible for Anakin's birth. It is canon in Star Wars comics that Palpatine manipulated the Metachlorians in order, in order to create life, and as a result, Anakin was born. He did not specifically choose Anakin but to, to directly create him, but he did influence the Metachlorians in order to create another life form and Anakin was born as a result. And the reason for him doing this is most likely because he learned from Darth Pelagius the ability to transfer his essence in order to achieve immortality. That is the theory. And 
why he created the Ray clone, why he created Ray, is because of what happened to Anakin at the end of Revenge of the Sith. He was horribly disfigured and crippled at the end of you know, the Revenge of the Sith. So he became worthless to Palpatine as a vessel. And it became just a tool for him, a, a blunt instrument in order to maintain his rule until he was able to find another vessel in order to transfer his essence into. He was going to try with Luke. That's, the, that's why he wanted Luke to kill his father and take his place by his side, become his new apprentice, build him up, and then take him over. That is the most likely possibility. Palpatine has done this before in, uh, in Legends. Well, he's done this before in Legends. And we know that Lucasfilm is drawing a little inspiration from Legends. That there are several things that they have drawn from Legends. This could be one of them. This ability for Palpatine to transfer his essence from himself to another body. And he may have survived what happened to the Death Star, the Death Star 2. His essence may have survived by him basically binding it to something on the Death Star in the event of his death. Because we know that the Sith, or dark side users, can't become Force Ghosts. But they can, we learn through the Clone Wars series, that they can bind themselves to a location and be ghosts that way. As we saw that in the episode, near the end of the series, actually at the end of the series, with Yoda going to Korriban and encountering Darth Bane. So we know that. So, he's there on Endor, in the ruins of the Death Star, and he likely takes over Rey, and that was likely the purpose, and the reason why there are so many different copies of Rey in her vision is because there were several different clones. From the Clone Wars series, we also learned that you can't clone a Jedi. If you make a clone of a Jedi, you're just going to clone the person. You may not necessarily gain the Force abilities, the Force sensitivity. We learned from Yoda talking to the clones in the other episode in that all the clones were all different in the Force, even though they were physically identical. So they could have made multiple clones of Rey. None of them were Force-sensitive until they finally found one, until they finally got to one. But by the time they made her, Palpatine was dead, or or it was before he even had a chance to do to um to use her or he was killed before she was even ready for him to transfer into that's the likely scenario that's the theory going around right now so is that dark side rape palpatine or is it just a force vision is it of her seeing herself falling to the dark side we don't know. So, is J.J. Uh, Abrams going to right the ship? Is he going to steer Star Wars away from the rocks and avoid crashing? Because if, because if the rise of Skywalker, right? If the rise of Skywalker fails. It could mean the end of the Star Wars franchise, at least for now. Disney might put it aside for a long time. They might even sell it. Hopefully they'll sell it to somebody who will actually do it justice. Tony Pictures, maybe? They might do it justice. 
but uh, Star Wars in movie form, the future of Star Wars rests on whether or not, whether or not uh, the Rise of Skywalker sucks or not. Because if this fails, we may not get another Star Wars movie for a long time. Oh, we'll get their Disney Plus TV shows, which The Mandalorian is actually looking looking like it might be pretty interesting. But beyond that, yeah, bye bye Star Wars. Help make Zort Central great again by visiting the Gamers Bay store, where you can find retro games, movies, and more. Also check out the Gamers Bay community on MeWe. MeWe is the only social media network that takes your privacy as seriously as you do. Links are in the video description.